On a stormy day in Mississippi, 13-year-old Lee Marine Ochi disappeared from her home without a trace. It was August 27, 1992, and Hurricane Andrew had just swept through the area. Her mother, Vicki Felton, returned home to a scene of horror, finding not only her beloved daughter missing, but also evidence of blood in the house. The mystery surrounding Lee's disappearance has baffled investigators for decades. What happened to this young girl, and who is responsible for her vanishing? Lee Ochi's life began in Honolulu, Hawaii on August 21, 1979, to Donald Ochi and Vicki Felton, both members of the United States Army. Her parents met while serving in California and got married in 1977, but their marriage fell apart and they divorced in 1981. Despite the distance, Lee remained in touch with her father who relocated to Germany. Meanwhile, she and her mother Vicki settled down in Tupelo, Mississippi, where Lee attended school and lived a seemingly ordinary life. Lee's mother Vicki had left her alone at home for the first time on the morning of August 27, 1992. Lee was at home waiting for her grandmother to pick her up for an open house event at her school while her mother went to work. However, Heavy storms caused by Hurricane Andrew were moving through the area and Vicki was worried about Lee's safety. She tried to call her daughter at 8.30 a.m., but there was no answer. Vicki made another attempt to contact Lee before returning home, but there was still no response. Upon her return home during the intensifying storm, Vicki's unease only grew stronger as she noticed the garage door was open and the light was on indicating recent activity. To her dismay, she found one of the doors to the house unlocked, adding to her growing worry. Despite searching the house and surrounding areas, Lee was nowhere to be found. Vicki combed through every room, calling out for her daughter with no response until she reached Lee's room, where she discovered her daughter's cherished blanket crumpled on the floor. In a panic, she called 911 at approximately 9 a.m. and reported her daughter missing. Unfortunately, Lee has not been seen since. The scene that greeted the police when they arrived at Lee's house was a horrifying one. Although there were no signs of forced entry, it was evident that something terrible had happened inside. The walls, carpet, and bathroom countertop were all smeared with fresh, still wet stains of blood. A trail of blood led from the hallway to the living room and ended at the back door, and there were traces of blood and hair stuck to a door frame, suggesting that Lee had hit her head on the way out. To add to the horror, one of Lee's blood-stained nightgowns and her bra were found in her bedroom. It was the same nightgown that she had been wearing when her mother left for work that morning. It was evident that someone had made efforts to clean up the blood in the bathroom, but police couldn't find any used rags or towels anywhere. According to Tupolo Police Chief, the appearance of the blood on the nightgown suggested not only did the blood drip down onto it, but also that the injury from which the blood came from was likely above the neck. The gruesome scene left investigators perplexed and desperate to find answers as to what had happened to Lee. As the investigation deepened, authorities discovered that some of Lee's belongings were also missing from the house. Her reading glasses, shoes, underwear, and a sleeping bag were nowhere to be found. The police searched the surrounding areas with the help of trained bloodhounds, but the weather conditions proved to be a formidable obstacle. Despite their best efforts, the dogs were unable to pick up a scent leaving the search party at a loss for where to turn next. A month after Lee vanished into thin air, something strange happened. A package containing her glasses arrived at her home. It was addressed to her stepfather, Barney Yarborough, but the street name on the envelope was misspelled and it had twice the necessary number of stamps. The package was postmarked from Boonville, a town 30 miles away from Tupolo. Inside the envelope, there were only the glasses. 
No message, no explanation, nothing. Police try to gather any evidence from the envelope or the handwriting, but they came up empty-handed. Also, the stamps had been drenched in water, rendering any DNA evidence unusable. To this day, the identity of the person who mailed the glasses remains a mystery. The police believe that the package was a deliberate distraction, but from what they did not know. The police chief stated, quote, there was no ransom letter or anything like that that came with those glasses. It was just those glasses. You would think if it was an actual kidnapping, you would have expected a little more to come along with that, end quote. On September 4th, 1992, eight days after Lee's disappearance, an employee from a McDonald's restaurant in Boonville reported seeing a girl who had matched Lee's description in the drive through The sighting was investigated but later ruled out when it was determined that the child was not Lee. The Clarion Ledger made a shocking announcement on November 9, 1993, 14 months after Lee's mysterious disappearance, stating, that a human skull found in a ditch near a soybean field had been positively identified by a Monroe County coroner through dental records. However, this claim was later retracted after further forensic testing revealing that the skull belonged to a missing 27-year-old woman who disappeared in March of 1993. Unfortunately, they faced a daunting challenge as they had very little evidence to go on. Despite interviewing several persons of interest, no one has been charged in connection with her case. As soon as Donald learned of his daughter's disappearance, he expressed his gut-wrenching feeling that it was already too late. While scouring the area for any sign of Lee, locals began pointing fingers at Donald's ex-wife as a potential suspect. Although Donald had his own suspicions, he struggled to believe that his ex-wife could be involved. Meanwhile, rumors swirled that Lee's stepfather, Barney Yarborough, who had been recently separated from her mother, was abusive towards her. However, after providing an alibi and passing a polygraph test, Yarborough was ruled out as a suspect. After Lee's stepfather was cleared of suspicion, Vicky was subjected to three separate polygraph tests, one by the local police and two by the FBI. Interestingly, all three independent examiners concluded that Vicky had displayed deception during the tests. According to her, she thinks the culprit behind Lee's disappearance was Oscar Mike Kearns, a man from the neighborhood who knew Lee from church. Nine months after Ochi's disappearance, Kearns abducted a ninth grade girl he knew from a Topolo church, took her to Memphis, Tennessee, and sexually assaulted her. He was sentenced to serve over eight years for that crime. He was released early after serving only half of his sentence. After his release, Kearns went on to commit another kidnapping and rape, resulting in his subsequent conviction. In 2017, the chief stated his belief that Vicky was still considered a person of interest in her daughter's disappearance. He said, quote, you still can't eliminate her. There are still too many unanswered questions for Vicky, and I don't know if that is unusual for somebody to go off to work and say, well, I just left Lee and I'm going to call and check on her. Why check on her that soon after she had left? End quote. The disappearance of Lee Ochi remains one of the most baffling and heart-wrenching cases in Mississippi's history. Despite the countless hours of searching, the numerous leads that have been followed up on, and the technological advancements made since 1992, the fate of Lee Ochi remains a mystery. However, the case has never been forgotten, and the investigative efforts continue to this day. The Tupolo Police Department still receives tips and information regarding Lee's disappearance, and are actively pursuing any leads that may come their way. The Ochi family has never given up hope and continues to fight for justice for Lee, holding annual vigils to keep her memory alive and to remind the public that she is still missing. The case has also had a lasting impact on the Tupolo community and beyond. 
with many still haunted by the thought of a young girl disappearing without a trace. It has led to the changes in the way missing persons cases are handled and investigated, as well as renewed efforts to keep the public informed and involved in the search for missing persons. In the end, the mystery of what happened to Lee Ochi will likely remain unsolved, but her story serves as a reminder of the importance of never giving up hope and of the continued need for justice and closure for families of missing persons. Lee has been missing for some time now, and authorities are still searching for any information that may lead to her whereabouts. If you have any information, please contact the Tupolo Police Department at 662-841-6491 or the FBI at 202-324-3000. Your help could bring closure to her loved ones.